What is up, Sunday fams? Welcome to another video. My name is Flip. I'm Element. And we get together every week to catch up on our favorite Asian dramas. But this time, we're watching Avatar. We the are. Last Airbender. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this brought back a lot of memories, especially those Saturday morning cartoons that you got up super early to watch and enjoy, mm -hmm. right? And this was something that pulled me right back when I was when I was waiting for those mornings. Especially since it's a cartoon kind of made for children, um, it was a little bit hard to get into. But as soon as you realize just how how much it's kind of emulating anime in a way where it's like portrayed in a childish manner but covering very adult themes. You kind of get into it, you kind of get sucked into it. And then, you know, obviously you get past the childish dialogue and the childish setups and the jokes. And then you get you get into the story, you get into the plot and you realize that it's just as enjoyable as any other, you know, narrative that we would see in anything more mature than this. Yeah, I mean, it covered a lot of adult relevant themes, mm -hmm. right? I mean, primarily it's all about friendship, justice, honor, loyalty. Courage, and courage hope. hope. I mean, everything that you can you can draw on in terms of anything that's, and we know that it's like very kiddy, right? It's mm -hmm. like cartoon, but the creators uh, made it in, in, as like a, a passion piece for the culture and for this world, right? It's supposed to be like ancient, mystical, like Chinese beliefs and systems, martial arts, air, fire, water, earth. Bending. Right? I think we could. I think we could like safely get away with saying this was actually kind of like a teenage, adult, young adult-ish cartoon, mm. and they were just kind of like, "Hey, Nickelodeon, we need some money. We'll make it. We'll make a kids' cartoon for you on Saturday mornings." And then they got the money, and they're like, "No, this is the actual cartoon <laughs> we were making." And so it was fun to revisit this, or oh, I shouldn't say revisit because we actually started with Legend of Korra, mm. and that show was like super incredible hooked Loved like it. from the very beginning with the animation style and the stories that it was portraying and then we kind of got like tastes of this story and we never really had a chance to pursue it uh, and we heard about Aang we heard about his family Katara and Sokka and then when this had this whole series had finally dropped on Netflix, it's been going crazy trending on Netflix. Everyone's re-watching it and mm -hmm. now we have a chance to finally watch it and get the full breadth of the backstory before Legend of Korra. Yeah, and we're watching this for the very first time ourselves because one of the biggest reasons why we're exploring the show is Netflix is bringing us the live action version. Mm -hmm. And I'm super excited about that. Hopefully the redeemed version uh, <laughs> separated from M. Night Shyamalan's thou shall never Dragon be, Ball Evolution should never, disaster. Should never be mentioned. <laughs> it's like thou shall not be named. Well, yeah, yeah. Vol and, Voldemort. <laughs> And so, you know, watching this, obviously we have the core message and the core themes of Legend of Korra that we're, we're familiar with. Definitely, you can see right away, the animation style is definitely what inspired Korra. Um, it's a little bit old, it's a little bit, you know, it takes some getting used to because mm -hmm. it's not as fluid as Korra, but we can certainly see where they got the basis from. Yeah, and if you haven't checked out Avatar The Last Airbender, I suggest you do if you're a big fan of, like, even though the, some of the dramas that we cover, like the wuxia, martial arts style, that type of world, this has it, but it's kind of just, you know, a cartoon anime, right? But mm -hmm. you can still appreciate its themes. I will promise you that the animation does get better towards the end of it. There, the movement is a lot more fluid. You can start to appreciate the different styles and forms and techniques of these air bending mastery that they that they showcase. Mm -hmm. it does get a little bit it's getting, getting used better. to. The animation definitely visibly gets better towards the latter half of the first book. And I'm looking forward to book two and mm -hmm. three and seeing where the animation goes from there. And I think what makes this show work so well, even for someone who's in his 30s, someone who's just breached the 40 year old uh, status. <laughs> I think it's because it's such a, or I think it's because it was structured in such a, you know, way aimed towards young kids, but with the more relatable adult theme mm. that you, you kind of just like digest it really easily. 
I think so too. Speaking of Wuxia and that type of universe, uh, we want you guys to check out this certain channel. We think she's awesome. Her name is Rai and she has a YouTube channel called Hello X Rai. Just go ahead and stop by her channel, give it a shout out, and uh, you know she covers a lot of the Asian dramas that we are interested in as well. But she really dives deep into the characters and uh, you know kind of gives a little bit more detail into who they are and what they're supposed to be about. Link in the description below. And although we have been saying that it's very much more of a childlike approach to the show at the last two episodes, which is probably my favorite part of book one, mm -hmm. it gets really dark. The themes get super dark, it gets a little bit more serious, and the battles get really epic. Lives and are man, at stake. I loved it. I loved it too. Lives are at stake. You know, romance starts to blossom between Sokka and Yue. And, you know, it's just... The, the the earlier half of the the book was just all about kind of like fun you know frivolous adventure mm -hmm. and then towards the latter half it's just you know dialing it in with the avatar and what his purpose is in the entire world of this show yeah and it sets up book two really nicely the, the daughter <laughs> the daughter is set up to be the big bad villain now it seems like prince zuko is kind of you know done his journey and he's becoming a better man i hope so i don't know yeah, like, i'm not too sure you know, he was I mean, so bent up on capturing the avatar to restore his honor he definitely but, uh, went through an arc there yeah like, i he's think he's less kind of over less, it. yeah he's he's definitely getting over it but in any case that'll do it for our impressions and our review of book one we are looking forward to book two and three guys if you enjoyed the video please leave a like give us that thumbs up and if you're new to this channel and you want to keep up with us subscribe turn on notifications We'll be subsequently covering book two and three as we finish this series. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.